How's it going, Short Kings? It is week five, and this week we are on the road to play TCU. The Horned Frogs have only played uh, an FCS opponent that they beat pretty soundly, while we have struggled to start this season 3-0. Close games in all three of the first ones, and against teams apparently they're not going to do too well. Kirk Herbstreit's going to be in our corner for this fight, but uh, I, I don't know. TCU is an A overall. Yeah, we can't really count the rest of their stats since they've only played an FCS team, but that A, A overall and our minus eight turnover differential, that's pretty rough. Of course, we have to do our recruiting first, so we'll go ahead and get into this. And right off the bat, we got to get rid of Patrick Smith, the corner. Kyle Jackson, the fullback. The Pac-12's eaten up all my short kings. And we will try and pick some guys up. Um, I want to go low lock from the from the get-go here man apparently i took some guys off but we're gonna have to just take whatever we can get joe mcafee why is joe mcafee not on our board same thing with sterling rivera there's still a few guys that haven't been scouted so alex daniels will throw onto the board just because he's pretty solid and then i think we will go back and use that low lock cheese to pick up whatever we can and sterling is probably the best choice there with our thousand points that we can put in, let's go ahead and scout Alex Daniels right away. And he goes down a little bit, but it's pretty dang solid. Maybe not the fastest player, but a good running back nonetheless. Man, a lot of these guys, I don't think we're going to be able to get. Stan Williams isn't, isn't going to come hang out with us. 98% locked and we're 2,000 points behind. The board is full of these guys. Marvin Schmidt, we're losing 285 a week. He's 86% locked and we're 3,100 points back. So it's going to be just a lot of us trying to hold on. I mean, even Jacob Ferris, we're almost 3,000 points back, losing 760, and we can only put 500. So uh, I'm really not sure where some of this recruiting is going to come from. Chris Monroe's kind of the same thing. We can try to stop the bleeding and give him that 500, but he's still going to be losing 30 a week towards us. So I'm not really too confident. It's like that with a lot of these guys. Tony Burgess, we're losing 410 while putting uh, 500 into him. We've got 100 points left and uh, two fullbacks that I'd like to look at. I think we'll go for the one that we're further behind on for now and then we'll add three more guys to the board and call it good. Well, let's go ahead and get into this one. Going to war. We hit the road to face TCU and this is not going to be an easy game. 95 overall, they get the shaky bars. Oh no. Three top players for TCU are a wide receiver at 95, an outside linebacker at 95, and a middle linebacker at 92. So I expect uh, Turpin to maybe dust us a couple times, and Howard and Summers are going to help lock down that uh, defensive front seven. Really got to hope as we go on the road here that we can pull something out, but I just feel like our luck has got to run out at some point. 3-0. And they're all close ones, and we're on the road once again. I'm, I'm not sure what we can do. Three turnovers a game is terrible. And uh, we just, I don't know, make big plays and we might have a chance, but definitely don't feel confident right now. Welcome to Eamon G. Carter Stadium here in Fort Worth. Uh, not a whole lot of blue in the stands today as the Horned Frogs are looking to make a, a good impression here in their second game of the season. We're going to go with Tails here and we will win the toss so we get a kick off to start this game which is fantastic in my opinion. Jolly has got a hold of this one. And it's going to be a return here on the kickoff. Can we make sure we tackle him? There we go. Sorry if it sounds like my voice has gone a little bit. It feels like it's kind of starting to go right now. Plenty of time for uh, Kenny Trill on that opening uh, play, but we end up with a sack. Second and 11. 
That's gonna be a run. Can we stretch this out with Frederick? Oh, wow. I thought he was about to break that tackle. We got him in a third and eight. This is a good, good opportunity for the defense to get off the field. On third down, they will drop back to pass. I see out routes. That was way... Oh, that was terrible coverage for me. Broken tackles. It's up to Holland now. He gets pushed in the back. There's no flag on the play. So the Horn Frogs are going to go 68 yards for a first and goal. If you're going to try to tell me that Gabe Holland wasn't shoved in the back, I'm, I, I don't know what to tell you. You've lost your damn mind. Plenty of time for Kenny Trill. He's going to slide down there inside the five. They continue to go with this hurry up second and goal. Oh, I totally expected to see something there. Evans tackles him third and goal. I thought they were going to run, but I, they must on third down here. We're bringing the house. Actually, with what they're showing, we just have to watch for the scramble. And we hit him. Fourth and goal. Wow, I was lucky to get there in time. They're going to show a field goal formation. We're going to be in the safe zone just to be safe. <laughs> that, that was stupid. <laughs> they will kick the field goal. They're going to be up 3 nothing, And honestly, uh, I think we're fine with the way that one works. Gene Nunez will be back deep to return this one from about five deep in the end zone. See if we can get to the edge. Nunez makes one man miss. Uh, probably should have taken the touchback, though. And that means that it's time for Richie Kirk to come out and start this drive. Got to remember, not the greatest passer. Uh, but he shouldn't be able to find Gene Nunez. Gene, oh, it's got to be scary for the defense. And you see old Gene getting free like that. So on second 11, it's time to go to the air again. A little play action. Risky throw, Bruh. and it's an interception. Oh, we needed to limit the turnovers in this game, and that's a terrible way to start. First and 10, they're going to put this one on the ground. I got pancaked. Is this going to be a one-play touchdown? Oh, thank goodness we get the tackle there. Still first and 10. We're most likely just going to get obliterated if they decide to run the ball. We have zero run-stopping potential on this team. We do look decent here. And in the back corner of the end zone, Zach Casey drops a pick. Cannot have dropped interceptions. Second and 10. They're going to put this one on the ground again. And Frederick, we got lucky. He ran into the lineman there. Big third and 10 here. They're going to go with a draw. And Frederick gets the tackle. Stands him up. Fourth and seven. We'll hold him to another field goal attempt here. Ooh, we came close to blocking that one, if I'm being honest. But... Another three points for TCU as North Carolina number four is up on number one Clemson. Big game there. Tried to give it to Tlaib on first down. He does pick up a little bit of a block, but too slow to really get to the corner. And it brings up second and eight. We get Irby in, but we're going to go to the air here. See if Richie can atone for his mistakes on the last drive. He does find Kevin McMillan for six yards. And on this third down, we're basically doing the exact same thing. Some more slants. Y, A, A is open. Oh my gosh, Flanagan caught it and then ran back. So it's fourth and two. I don't even care where we're at on the field. We're going for this. Fourth and two. Richie just needs to make a not terrible throw. He does find Flanagan that time. And uh, whoa, what is that camera movement? A little... Whoa. End of the first quarter here. Um, down six, nothing. Could be a lot worse considering how their offense has moved and the, the fact that my second pass was an interception. The one thing I'm not happy with about the defense right now is that we have a dropped interception, but I'm just used to that. Here's Irby for a good first down and we're nearing midfield. I'm gonna say it now. If we manage to score a touchdown on this drive, we're going for two. As X could be open. Nunez, Gene, go! You have to have a little bit more speed than that, my guy. Still a good 35 yards, though. Try to get a little bit of running going again. That's a mediocre first down as Tlaib gets three. And I got to remember, in this game, we're playing for a ranking. Oh, my gosh, they're bringing so much pressure. Get rid of that, Richie. No! How does he not throw that away in time? It's a huge sack. Oh, that is killer. It's now a huge third down. And I'm looking for Gene or Khalif. 
I don't like either. Might be right bumper. Oh my, what a Bruh. terrible throw. We give Summers his second interception of the game. So inaccurate when it mattered most there. Well, they'll be passing again. Quarterback actually scrambled. Uh, I don't know how he got past that first guy, but Kenny Trill only gets three yards. Second and seven. They go with a screen. Literally nobody on my defense can get off the block. We see one broken tackle, another broken tackle, and we finally bring Kyle Hicks down. This man's fucking unstoppable. Try a blitz, because we know that they're likely going to run. No, but it works out for us. He had to throw that one away quick. They only get two yards. Five wide. Horn Frog's going to try to come at me, and we get the sack. The rush gets to Kenny Hill, and we'll have a third and long that we get to defend now. We are only going to rush three here on third and 17. They go with a screen, and they'll lose a couple of yards on that, so the defense holds. And we just need the offense to find some way to get points on the board. Who knows? I feel like I'm always asking for it, but maybe one, maybe Gene can continue to be this team's savior. Does he have the corner? I don't know if he has the speed to get there. Running all the way across the edge of the field, picking up blocks downfield. Gene Nunez on the punt return. Are you kidding me? He takes it 85 yards to the house. What an incredible way to get points on the board. Gene Nunez is honestly absurd. And in staying true to my word, we're going to go for two here. Let's see. Richie outside the pocket has right bumper. Carpenter. Dude, Richie, you got to be more accurate, man. It hurts so much that we're not able to pick up that two-point conversion when the play call worked perfectly. Oh, I just left my man. Bad coverage for me. It gives him nine yards there. Well, I accidentally audible to a blitz. Realized they were five wide. Now they come out showing run. Marks, huge chance to hit the man in the backfield there. And he just can't get the tackle. We would have had him in a third down situation. Instead, it's another first for the Horned Frogs. Second and eight. I'm expecting them to do a lot of passing here. And we will take stuff like that. Third and five. This is a big third down here. Remember, we do get the ball to start the third quarter. And they're going to go with the screen. Can Marks get there? Oh, we didn't have to. So in a game that's been pretty tight, we got to be careful of the pressure here. Oh, my God, Fritchie. He's going to give me a heart attack. Have you ever seen one man be so inconsistent? We're just going to play patience there and throw it over the head of Khalif James, third and ten. Oh, man. I've done just about everything I can to try and prevent problems. There's Gene for the first down, though. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Gene, for doing something. They're going to bring pressure. Let's get outside the pocket. Find Gene again. and Dude, Gene Nunez for Heisman, please. Second and 10, not bringing a whole lot of pressure. A is there. Carpenter has it across midfield. Even a field goal would be big right now. Not really bringing too much pressure, but I'm going to get Richie outside the pocket. Man misses on the dive. Let's just take the yards. I took a second to look downfield there, and I didn't see anything I liked. We got to remember that we don't have the greatest kicking team in the nation. But we might. No, that's a pick. Bruh. My goodness, dude. I cannot stop throwing picks with Richie. 39 seconds. I absolutely expect. Oh, I thought I could have got there for the user. I absolutely expect them to go for points here, though. Okay. Uh, third and six. They're not going to take a timeout. If we can get this to halftime without giving up points, I'm fine with it. On third down, they go to the air. My coverage isn't great. We knock Hicks out of bounds. It's fourth and one. They're going to have to punt to Gina here. This could be interesting. Well, these cowards don't want to punt it to Gene. They're going to go for it. So whatever they want to do, I'm fine with it. They're going to throw the Hail Mary. Please don't give up points. Ball thankfully hits the turf. And we'll go into the locker rooms. Uh, here at halftime, tied up at six apiece. They have a pair of field goals. We have a touchdown with a failed two-point conversion. Um, 
We also have three turnovers. So this is our game to, to really to lose at this point. The way that we've been playing. Maybe we can figure something out, but it's up to Richie Kirk here in the, in the half break to uh, put his head back on his shoulders. Some of the best news is that they do have to kick off to us. So again, we're going to be bringing this one out with Gene. He's already shown what he's capable of today. Oh, can he get to the corner there? Men missing tackles. And at least he gets to the 35. One more miss there, and he might have been off to the races. We'll try a draw on first down. They don't typically work that well for me, and it doesn't work that well either there. And now, just like pretty much every other drive, it feels like, we're going to be fighting for the first down, but Khalif has it. Good little route running there. I really am going to mix in as many draws as I can. This time it's a mid-draw to Irby. Dude, he is so slow to get going sometimes. I don't, I don't get that. Second and nine. Again, we'll get outside the pocket. We've got Khalif. Thank goodness Khalif makes that catch. That another just bad throw for Mochi. Um, they're thankfully not bringing a ton of pressure as we'll find McMillan quickly there for another six. The size difference of our lines is honestly so staggering to me. Their guys are giants compared to ours. Talib, okay, finally getting a little bit of blocking. Gets across the 25 on that 14-yard carry. Try the draw to Irby again. Dude, where is his speed? He does manage to sneak through, but there's something wrong with my game here. One of three so far on third downs. Richie outside the pocket. I'm not seeing anything. We're going to try to scramble for it. We got most of it. It's fourth and one. And I think we're going to go for this. Big, big fourth down here. Again, they're not bringing too much pressure. McMillan holds on to that one inside the 10. What a, what a big clutch play that time. Second and goal. Kind of as far out as I feel comfortable passing. It looks like they're going to bring pressure and they will. Irby is wide open for the touchdown though. Ooh, they should not have brought that pressure so close to the end zone. To me, this game is feeling a lot like the Kansas State game in which they were absolutely dominant running the ball, but they've been put in a position where they feel like they have to pass. And while I won't go so far as to say that we're a good team at stopping the pass, I will say that we're better at stopping the pass than the run. A little case in point here as their blocking is just so good. I think this team is destined to, uh, you know, not be good at stopping the run. They go with another screen. Fool me twice, am I right? They only get four yards that time, thankfully. They don't do it a third time, would they? It would be too rude. No, they're going to go with the, uh, the jet sweep again. Thankfully, we'll eat it up, and it's uh, third and long for the Horned Frogs here. I think they're kind of seeing... The formations that we're in and uh, maybe getting a little bit oh my gosh where was the coverage on Taj Williams there just like that we are all tied up and uh, I don't know how I feel right now good blocking again for Gene allows another good return we need the offense to get points though uh, and, and I think a touchdown it has to be We'll try the read option on first down. Again, trying to get rushing yards. Richie, oh, taking a hit in the backfield, though. Kind of looking for Khalif James on this one on the little curl. Holds on to it through the contact, and it's uh, third and one. We're going to let this go into the fourth quarter here. And as the clock uh, hits triple zeros on this third quarter of play, we are all tied up at 13. Hopefully we can move the ball and, and get some early points on the board here. Clutch skill activated for the Horned Frogs is bad news for me. Again, not bringing too much pressure. There it comes. Richie might be able to scramble for this first down. Ploey, of course he fumbles. Richie, four turnovers on the day now. And the Horned Frogs have possession in territory. Oh, come on, Richie. You cannot do that. Uh, surprisingly, they're actually going to go to the air here. I was expecting a run. I'm just in shock. We need to hold them to a field goal if we want to have a chance in this one. I can sense a run coming. I just don't know when or who's going to get it. It just, I can feel it in my bones. 
Oh, come on. My coverage is so bad. I really need these players to start hitting the books because they are not the brightest group. Um, Second and goal. We got a chance, but they just got four yards there. And that four yards was with us bringing a pretty sizable blitz. Oh, come on. Powell, thank goodness they ran out of bounds. Big third down here. I feel like I've said that a lot. Third and goal. They will hand it off. I hit the wrong gap. And it's Kyle Hicks in for the touchdown. Four freaking turnovers. And it's a one-score game. Imagine if I just took care of the ball a little bit. Gene. Oh, again. One man misses and he's gone. It is really telling that the only reason we're winning these games is because of Gene Nunez. Throwing that one to McMillan. Whew, that was a tough throw. 420 to go in this game. What can we get going? I really wish we could take shots deep, but I don't trust Richie's arm. Instead, we will just try to find Gene in better field position. I've got to start to make the decision here on whether or not we start playing for overtime. Because it might be wise to burn a little bit of clock. 3.44 to go. If I allow TCU to get the ball back, they might be able to burn the clock out and kick a, uh, a field goal to win. But we are moving the ball pretty quick here. Uh, we're, yeah, we're going to burn the clock. Three minutes to go now. Trying to get a little bit of running. And Talib's got absolutely nothing doing there. I think Talib actually ran into a brick wall on that play. As oh, I hit the wrong button. I am so lucky he didn't throw it, but that's that's a little frustrating. We had men open all over the place. Maybe a little bit dangerous here. Looking for Gene, and he gets it. We got to. He dropped it. No. Fourth and thirteen. A minute and forty-five to go, and Gene just dropped a pass on fourth down. We're outside the pocket. We have Khalif James. He holds on to it through the contact and we're still alive. A minute and 39 to go. Please, please, please no turnovers on this possession. First and 10. They're not bringing a whole lot of pressure. Should have thrown it to my A on the out route, but we find Donald for five. And again, we don't want there to be too much time left when we score the ball. So we are, you know, allowing the clock to kind of burn out. Just a little bit here. Second and five. Again, not bringing too much pressure. There's Howard Flanagan, but I don't think he got anything. Two yards there. A minute to go in third and three now. Again, get it. Richie outside the pocket. We find right bumper. I didn't want Flanagan to go in. I actually purposefully prevented him from scoring the touchdown. Let's hope it doesn't bite us in the butt. Barring a penalty, we can only run a few more plays. So on this first down, we're going to let the clock burn. Under 30 seconds and run a QB sneak and then take our first time out. Richie couldn't dive over, got a yard though. This is ludicrous play calling. 25 seconds now. He got a yard the last time. We'll see what we can do again on this one. Richie, he got it. No, they say nothing. They say he didn't get a yard at all. We'll take another time out. Oh, I don't know what to do here. We're going to go with the read option. That motion actually moved two guys away from the play. Third and goal from the inch line. Irby is the option, man. He's going to get the handoff, and he's in. Oh, he's just barely in for the touchdown. Assuming we get the extra point, this game is tied up. We still have a problem, though, and that they have 15 seconds to get in field goal range. We want this one to be returned. And it will be. Remember, every second off the clock is huge for us. But we don't want to give up too much on this return. Okay, keep him on his feet for a little bit. Nine seconds to go. That was actually really good for us. As controversial as it may be, we're going to send men basically three deep right away. And this that's actually fine with me. Three seconds to go. Final play here. It's going to be a Hail Mary to see if we go to overtime or not. And like always, I'm going to send an extra man, one of our defensive ends back as an extra body to try and help make sure we have a chance at the tackle. Gabe Hollins. Whew. Ball bounced around. 
It's the turf. Triple zeros on the clock. We're going to overtime for the second time in four games. We get the, uh, I don't know, almost the curse of getting to choose. We chose ha Tails to win the toss earlier uh, at the beginning of the game. We're going to go heads here. and We win again. So we will choose defense. And if the defense can hold, we'll have a chance to win it here. I am very worried about them running the ball. They're going to go with a screen. Frederick, huge tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Second and 16. Big play. Expecting passes here. Maybe we see it screen. No, they go with a draw. Marks gets there, slows him down, and Hicks only gets two yards. Third and 14 now in overtime. Now, uh, if you watch us on Twitch, you'll know that I'm known for giving up third and longs. We'll see if it happens this time. Trying to play real safe on the coverage. There's a man. Can we get there? First and 10. Ooh, just barely got the spot. That one stings. First down, they do go to the air again. And it's another completion inside the 10, second and three. They're five wide, and we're going to bring a blitz here. Ooh, I had to back off there. Make sure that they can't do too much. First and goal. Five wide here for Kenny Trill. I knew that the draw was coming, but we can't do anything. He gets the stiff arm cheese into the end zone for the touchdown. And to think we had them in a third and long as they get the extra point. And that means our offense has to do the job twice in a row. Alternatively, we could go for two at some point here in overtime. I want to try to avoid it, though. Richie getting a good six yards on the ground off the read option early. Second and four. They're going to bring actually not a whole lot of pressure. I got to get rid of it, though. Oh, lucky it's not an intentional grounding. Third and four. They do bring pressure here, which could leave Irby. And Richie makes a terrible throw. Wide open, Donald Irby. It kills me that it comes down to this. Fourth and four. They're bringing a lot of pressure. Please, Gene. Please, Gene. Can't come down with it. And that's the game. Richie Kirk is the least clutch of anybody on this team. I hurt so bad right now because we screwed that up so many times. Four turnovers in the game and we still took it to overtime, but it's not enough to get it done. The dream of a perfect season is no more because of this captain in Richie. 23 of 33 through the air, three interceptions. And if we go to the rushing, we can scroll over to one fumble as well. And just, we, we cannot run the ball. We have such a bad offensive line that we can't do anything on the ground. Receiving wise, Gene Nunez gets 117 yards. Um, technically he had a drop, but I really can't blame him for all, all that much. Defensively, Devon Lester, Gabe Holland, and Lawrence Young all get sacks. And, well, we could have had an interception, but Zach Casey dropped one in the back of the end zone. We end up with a decent amount of yardage, I guess. I mean, if you compare it to TCU, but it's not enough. And just four turnovers. It makes me want to cry. I've had the wind taken out of my sails. I feel deflated because we went to an extra frame and lost it 27 to 20. To top it off, Jorge Britton and Tony Burgess will commit elsewhere. Adrian Stewart's gonna lock us out. Honestly, it feels like we're gonna get like three guys to commit at this point. And at least we get Louisiana Tech at home. They're 0-4. And, uh, man, opening the conference, I was really thinking we were going to be undefeated and ranked. They are the better team, but if they're a C plus and we just brought that fight to an A team, I think we should be okay. Minus 12 in the turnover differential through four games, though, just infuriates me. But well, that's going to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed this one, feel free to subscribe so you know when new ones come out. Or maybe head on over to twitch.tv slash poonmaster69. And give us a follow there to, to watch us play these types of games live. Regardless, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Poonmaster. You guys are the Short Kings. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.